Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm gonna be showing you guys how to build a very simple but very cool looking modal in React.js. So this is exactly what we're gonna be building over here. Um, you can see, uh, this is just an example, but it will, imagine in your website there's something saying something like, uh, hey, click on this button to open a model. And when you click on this button, you'll see a modal will appear like over here. Um, you can add it and make it um, say whatever you want. You can make it, you can customize it to however you want it. But this is kind of what we're, we're, we're dealing with. Uh, it will appear based on what you click. And then you can click on this to, I don't know, take some action. Or you can just click on cancel to go back. Or you can also go back by clicking on this X button over here. I wouldn't say this is very complicated. However, the logic to build this is really interesting for beginners. And I definitely think it is a stepping stone for those who are learning React because it definitely teaches you guys some of the basics that are fundamentally important later on in your React coding journey. And before we get into the video, if you guys could leave a like and subscribe, if you're not subscribed, I would massively appreciate it because every time you leave a like, it, it definitely helps push my videos to more people. I realized that uh, <laughs> since I started asking you guys to leave a like, um, my videos started being pushed to more people and I, I couldn't be more grateful. So if you guys could help support the channel, uh, it would make me very happy. So now let's get into the tutorial. Okay guys, so as you can see, um, I already set up a very simple application over here. Um, this is a React app, I just uh, ran a Yarn Create React app and I deleted the necessary files, these are the only files we're going to be using and I already just created a very simple web page with this title and this button. Um, you can see that when I click on the button nothing happens because we haven't implemented the logic for it yet which is the main point of this video but if you want to follow along and have the exact same application um, this is the CSS that I'm using over here um, all the link uh, the link for the code and for the repository will be all in the description so if you just want to uh, pull and uh, this application so that you work on it um, it's totally fine it will be in the description so you can see we have a very simple application over here in our app.js file we have this component called app which inside of it, it just has an, uh, an h1 tag and a button and we give a class name called open model button. So intentionally, when we click on this button, we want to open the model. So in order to make that work, what we want to do is we want to create a component called the modal, right? Um, by the way, I may say model <laughs> instead of modal throughout the video. It's just that throughout my whole life, I always called it model, but I know it's modal, so I'll keep trying to, to fix it on my own. So what we want to do is we want to create a folder over here called component uh, components. And this is where we're going to hold all of our different components in our application. In this case, we're just going to have one component, which is going to be called um, modo. So we're going to say modo.js like this. And over here, I'm going to use a snippet that I have, which I mentioned in a lot of videos, uh, which allows me to just write RFCE and it will generate for me this beautiful functional component. So the thing with the modo is we want to be able to see it. So right now what we want to do is I'm just going to write something. I'm just going to write like modo so that we, we have a confirmation that this modo is being rendered. Then we want to come here to our app.js and I just want to render it. So let's just say modo like this and let's import it over here at the top. So I'm going to say import modo from dot slash. Um, then we're going to go to components and then slash modo. And now we should see the modal component being rendered over here, right? So what we want to do is basically we want to uh, generate the, the the a very simple UI a skeleton to our modal initially, no no styling whatsoever, and then when we're ready, we're going to basically just uh, add the logic so that the modal will appear based on button clicks, right? So for the modal, we're gonna come over here to modal.js. And we're going to start by uh, creating our skeleton, right? And when I say skeleton, it's just the structure for our JSX. So like the divs, um, the buttons we're going to put, the, the the text, whatever we want. So what we want to do is we want to create this overall div over here. And let's call it, um, let's give it a class name of modal background. And what this div will do is basically when we click on our modal, we want to be able to create a background around it right we want if you remember uh, in the example when we click on it the background becomes gray instead of what it usually shows right so that's basically what we're doing we're creating a fake background to represent um kind of to give this kind of like blurry effect so this is what this div will be representing then 
we want to put inside of it uh, a div which is going to actually contain all of the info like everything related to the modal so let's just give it a class name called um, modal container something like this then we want to come over here and what I like to do is I want I like to basically uh, divide my my applications every single div that I work with um, throughout its its different components so in this case um, our modal will have three different uh, sectors one is going to be called the title sector so I'm going to create a div over here called um, maybe title I'm going to give it a class name of title so class name and then I'm going to call it a uh, title like this um, then we're going to copy this and we're going to add two more because it's going to be divided into three different parts and one of them is going to be called the body um, the other one we call the footer so basically if you recall we have three different parts to our model we're going to have the title part where um, there's just a title asking something like are you sure you want to continue um, then there's going to be the body you can add different stuff to the body you can put a picture you can put i don't know more text you can put a paragraph i just put a very simple little text in the middle um, and then there's the footer which includes the buttons maybe a button to continue forward or a button to just cancel everything so that's kind of like the division that we're following so one thing that i also want to do is before all of this um, if you recall we have a little x button uh, a little x that when you click on it it will just close the modal so the way i like to do this is i like to come over here and before the actual uh before the actual title we're just going to create a button over here and like above the title because the title will be below it and this button will be uh, we'll just have a simple x as like it's text inside of it so now that we have kind of divided uh, a little bit of the skeleton let's start implementing the stuff inside of it so what i want to do is we know that the title it's going to have a, an h1 tag inside of it um saying something like are you sure uh you want to continue something like this because usually um modals are used for like confirmation right or maybe it's used for other stuff as well but um, in this case where this is the kind of the the format that we're following and then for the body we're gonna have a, a p tag because it's kind of like a paragraph um which will say something like um the next page is awesome by the way i don't remember if this is exactly what i wrote in the example in the beginning it's because i'm not looking at the code um, i'm just writing as i remember so the next page is awesome you should move forward something like that uh you will enjoy it something like that right so what and now for the footer we just want to add a very simple very simple but like two different buttons um, one of them is going to be called it's going to basically just say something like cancel and the other one will say something like um, continue uh, continue and you'll see that if i save this and i come over here we have our skeleton right and, and our skeleton um just shows the ui the the html elements that we added um but it doesn't have any styling obviously um, it, it, and it's so completely okay. We're gonna work with the styling later on, but for now we can see our modal is appearing. Now we're gonna work on the logic, right? The actual uh, really important part of working with modals. How do we make it so that when we click on this button, this will be covering the whole page or this is going to appear. And when we click on the X or in the cancel button, it's going to disappear. Okay, so in order to make that work, we're actually gonna come here to our app.js and inside of here, we're gonna create a state that is going to represent whether or not we open the model or not. So over here at the top, we're going to import from React. So import um, like this, import uh, from React the use state hook um, like this. And basically, uh, this will allow us, for those who don't, who are not familiar with the use state hook, it will allow us to conditionally render certain uh, components certain aspects of our page uh, based on some sort of variable and it will re-render the page every time that variable changes its value so in this case we can just come over here and create our state like this we're going to say const equal to use state then this state will be a boolean so uh, it will initially be false because the we don't want the modal to be opened initially and then we can call this modal um something like i don't know open modal 
Uh, and then we're going to pass a function that is going to be used to mutate this variable. So we usually call it set open modal or something like that. And now that we have this state, we want to be able to uh, change its value based on if we clicked on this button. So the way to do this is we're going to come over here and we want to set this value to true if we click on this button. So we're going to say on click and then we're going to pass a function inside of here. And this function will be all in line like this. And all it does is it will basically set open modal equal to true. If we click on this on this button, all we're doing is we're calling this function and changing the value of open modal to true uh, so that we actually render this. And now you'll see that this logic will work because, for example, if we want to conditionally render the modal based on the value of this state, all we have to do is we have to open some uh, JavaScript inside of our uh, page and then just ask, OK, if open modal is equal to true, then we want to render the modal component. This logic over here is very common in React and um, it will just allow us to show the modal based on the value of the state. So now if we save this, you'll see that um, initially it won't show the modal because modal is initial like open modal is initially false. But if we click on this button, now it will show it. Um, we don't have any uh, button setting it to false right now. Um, but that's exactly what we're going to do uh, after this. But you can see that it's actually opening every time we click on, on, on the open button. And if we refresh the page, it will disappear. And if we click again, it will show again. So now we want to be able to set the sequel to false based on if we clicked on the, the, the links like this one's over here, right? So to do that, we actually have to access this state over here inside of the modal.js component because you can see that the buttons that we want to click are all inside of here. So how exactly do we do this? How do we access this set open model function inside of a different component? Well, we can just pass it through its props. So over here, uh, we can create a prop. Um, let's call this, uh, I don't know, change. Uh, actually, no, let me call it close modal like this. And this is this is the name of the function we're going to be using. We can call it whatever we want. It's just the name of the prop. And then over here at the top, we can see that um, this function called close modal will be uh, passed um, based on the set open modal um, function that we already have. So basically, we're just we, we could have called it as well um, set open modal, but I don't like this name. <laughs> so this is why I'm just I I, just, I called it close modal. But basically, now what happens is every time we access this close modal uh, prop. Um, it will be the same thing as accessing this set open modal function. So all we have to do now is instead of this modal uh, component, every time we want to close it. So for example, in the X button over here, we want to do the same logic that we did um, over uh, in the app.js component. We just want to create a function on click that will um, close modal uh, like this, close modal, and it will set it equal to false now instead of true because we're trying to close it. And we'll do the same thing for the cancel button. So I'll just copy this over here and go to the cancel button. And you'll see that now if I refresh the page and I open this and I click on the X button, it will close it. If I click again, it will open. If I click on the cancel button, it will close it. Uh, you can mutate uh, different states by passing them through props, which is really interesting in React because it allows you to do stuff like this. Now you can see that our logic is basically working, right? We want to be able to make this look a little bit better. And I already have the CSS pre-made that for, for that specific model over th that I've showed you guys. Um, so what I want to do and what I've been doing in my previous videos, because you guys requested me to do this, um, is I will just paste the CSS um, for all of the different divs and classes that we created. And I will just go over what I did for each one of them so that the video isn't like 40 minutes long because CSS usually takes a long time to write. So I'll be back in a second with the CSS already pasted in and I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, guys. So as you can see, um, I just added the CSS and it looks exactly like how I, we, I showed you guys in the beginning. You're able to click on the buttons um, and it will just close it. And it looks pretty good in my opinion. I really liked what I did here. Um, and I'll just go over the CSS in a bit. Also, I wanted to tell you guys that um, I created this modal.css file inside of the components folder. And this is where we actually put all of our CSS. 
And to actually access the CSS file, I just imported the modal.css file here at the top. And also one other change that I made was I realized that uh, I had to create a div on top of the close button, the ax button. So I just created this div over here called title close button and I just wrapped it around the button. So I didn't do this while I was going over. So if you didn't do that as well and you wanna do it, this is how I did it. So these are the small changes that I did. And also one thing is you can see that um, when we open this, um, our cancel button isn't red. We can very easily fix that by just passing, um, you can see here in my CSS, I created a, a, a an ID called cancel button which makes the button red. So what I can do is I can just come here to the cancel button, give it an ID of uh, cancel, did I call it cancel button? Yeah, I called it cancel button. I'll just give it an idea of cancel button like this. And now it should be red instead of blue. So this is all the CSS that we did. Um, let's go over exactly what I did. So basically over here at the top, we created a modal background div, which is basically this div over here. It just makes everything gray and it overlays over whatever is in the background. And it is completely fixed and it, it's 100% of the width and 100% of the of the height. I made it gray, so this is the color. Um, and when, it's, when I say it's fixed, I mean that um, it is fixed at the top, right? It, it covers the whole thing. And I gave everything a display of flex and I put it right at the center. So the only thing inside of this component, inside of this div, is the modal container, which we justified to the center and aligned it to the center so that it is exactly at the center, like this. Then for the modal container, we did some very simple styling. We just made it 500 to 500. Um, we gave it some border radius. We gave it some box shadows that I thought looked really nice. And we gave it some padding as well. And you can see that all of this is pretty nicely seen over here, even the box shadow. So then inside of it, we basically, uh, first of all, uh, grabbed the title and just gave it some uh, aligning to the center. We also margined it to the top. Um, a little bit, 10 pixels, so that it looks a little bit like, it pushes a little bit to the bottom. Um, then for the close button, we just, uh, for the div around the, the close button, we just uh, justified everything to the end so that the button is right at the end over here. And then for the button itself, we just made the background color transparent and removed all of the border. And also added some cursor so that when we hover over this, it changes the cursor, as you can see. And then for the actual body, we just added, we made a display of flex and justified and aligned stuff to the center. We increased the font size a little bit and you can see that everything looks pretty nice. We, we aligned the text to the center so that it gives this kind of cool effect. And then finally for the footer, we just um, justify stuff to the center again. We added some margin to each of the buttons. We made the, the continue button blue and for the cancel button, we made it crimson, which are already predetermined colors in a CSS. So this, were all, this was all the styling that we've done and I really like how it turned out. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below and comment what you wanna see next. Subscribe because I post two to three times a week and I would massively appreciate it if you guys could help push my videos to more people, help grow the channel. We're growing at a very good rate and I am very thankful for that. So I would really appreciate it if you guys could help support the channel. And yeah, that's basically it. The code for this is in the description, so just check it out. And yeah, I see you guys next time.